So without further ado, let's welcome the Applegate family. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, yeah, if you want to sneak in here. Thanks, Blake. Again, Paul. Um, so excited to have you here. I've known this wonderful family for years and years and years. Paul um, used to actually help out with Career Day and Blake and Megan at uh, our Career Day at Parker Middle School in the Michigan City Area School. So maybe just introduce yourselves, give us a little background, and we'll start there. I guess I'm the oldest I get to start. <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Applegate. I'm a CPA. Um, I've been practicing in the CPA profession for 46 years. Ooh, and I've <clears throat> um, had a CPA firm, my own CPA firm, which is now they're part of, um, for 36 years. So um, I've uh, had a, not a very diverse career. Uh, <laughs> Worked for a large CPA firm, uh, Crow Horvath, uh, for uh, 10 years, and then my own firm for 36 years. So um, I don't do much job hopping. Yeah, it's a great thing. Um, I'm very blessed to have my two children um, as junior partners on the firm. Um, they're both CPAs, and they've brought a fresh perspective to, to our organization. Um, their knowledge of technology is, is outstanding, and they really helped us to improve our technology at our office and, uh, uh, and continue to do so, and that's, that's been a big benefit. Uh, uh, Megan works mainly in the audit and accounting area, and Blake works in the tax area. Um, I, told, I told my wife when they joined the firm, I said, we can't have them in the same department because they fought like cats and dogs when they were little. And I said, we can't have them in the same department or they'll probably fight, they'll probably fight at the office. So, uh, but actually, they're, they're very, very close. And, uh, and the public accounting profession today, you, you really are, are drifting towards specialization where uh, typically you'll have a tax department and an audit and accounting department because the complexity of both of those sets of um, of knowledge requirements is is you know, overwhelming. So you really Change have to have some specialization, and it works out very well. So. Well, that's Paul. Honestly, and you're being so humble, but yeah. you, you what a fabulous organization, and you do so much for the businesses in our community, mm -hmm. and your consistency for being in this community is um, priceless, really. Mm -hmm because of your knowledge and what you know and your relationships with the community. So, yeah. And I know it goes way beyond uh, our little geographical area, but thank you sincerely for all that you do. And Paul uh, has always had a philosophy of giving back to the community, and we'll get into that. But um, you're a gem, and so is your family, so thank you. Megan, you want to yeah, ask sure. a little bit about what you do? Yes, uh, Megan Applegate with, uh, obviously, Applegate Company CPAs. Um, officially back uh, since uh, January of 2014. However, if somebody um, asks me how long I've been with that weight company, uh, I'd say the first 20 years were in the maintenance area as far as picking up trash outside of the office. So Blake and I have been working there since we were probably four or five years old. We could do or help out with uh, some of those uh, duties. But uh, yeah, I just happy to be back, uh, like my dad said, involved. Um, in the community with a lot of the nonprofits, so I work with a lot of them, and I really enjoy it. Um, obviously, getting to attend the events is one of the best parts, uh, but also helping nonprofits and their board uh, really understand the direction that their nonprofit's going and how to help them plan for the future. That's really important, um, specifically when you have non-financial people on the board, and just helping them understand so it's not so overwhelming. So we've become um, very successful in presenting uh, financial information to our nonprofit boards uh, for everybody to understand. So. That is wonderful, Megan. I just know being the head of a non for profit, it's all Greek to me. Mm -hmm. And to have such a kind family and respectful family like yourselves to help any one of us in nonprofits and business mm -hmm. to understand and guide us is it is it well, it is the reason for many successes of the business around here. And again, you give back so much. Um, Megan is an LCN, Life Run Career Network, and your firefighter experience. Yep, yep. Yes. Blake and I are both on the Long Beach uh, Volunteer Fire Department. Um, I do the medical side and the fire side. Blake's on the fire side. I'm a board member of the Michigan City Chamber of Commerce as well. 
Um, and I'm one of the founding um, members of the Life Record Network, which, right. you know, Doom Park is going to be our spotlight organization again for 2021, so we're very excited about that um, because 2020 was such an unusual year. We didn't get to uh, have as many events with you, right. much. so it, it's going to be a great year, uh, remainder of this year and the next year as well. But and Megan, can I just take a minute with LCN, Lakefront Career Network, if you are a young professional and you're interested in meeting other young professionals, it is such a fabulous organization. Number one, you do so many fun things. It's great networking. If you're looking for a job or just looking for friends or looking, I mean, it's really in the fact that you teach, uh, from my perspective, you teach about giving back to the community and how that can be fun. And that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's been great. And there's uh, the trivia night that's coming up next. Yes. October 14th, I believe. Yeah, yeah, uh, so you can sign up uh, for that through the Michigan City Chamber website. Mm -hmm. um, but the proceeds from that will obviously benefit the work. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. And again, if anyone's interested in joining LCN, to go to the Michigan City yeah, Chamber yeah. website and you can find information. Absolutely. Or call Megan at it. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Thank you, Megan and Blake. Yeah, so I'm Blake Applegate. Um, I've uh, been an Applegating company for the last uh, six years now as well, a couple months after Megan. Uh, I used to work in Chicago at a time from there and realized that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, I'm the father of two girls four months and two and a half, um, and so learning a lot every day about that and understanding it's important to, uh, you know, that you're not always a master at uh, mm -hmm. being a parent, there's a lot to learn no matter how many kids you have, so um, as Megan said, I'm on the fire department as well. Uh, she is uh, my superior officer, so, <laughs> 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 um, I so yeah. Right. Well, thank you, Blake, and sure. I know being a parent, of this, I love that you bring that up. The point is that it's hard to be a parent at times, and even though you have a loving family for resources and to check things out with, sometimes it's nice to go beyond and get some input, yeah. because even though we think we know what to do, there are times where you're at a crossroads and, oh my goodness, is this right or not, or yes. how are we doing so all the best to you and your little ones. Um, and maybe Paul and I, you know, Megan and Blake, you can talk a little bit about if someone's interested in, in having Applegate services, what might they do? What's the best thing to do? Um, well, probably the best thing would obviously be just is send us an email, go to our website, we have a link where you could contact us, uh, where you, you certainly could call us, we have contact information there. Okay. Um, you know, we've... We work with uh, over 400 business clients, and um, our largest client probably has about a, what, a half a billion in sales, and our smallest client probably has $50,000 in sales. So it's a very diverse practice, mainly business-oriented. Uh, we also prepare the tax returns for individuals um, that have complex tax returns or are associated with the business. Um, so, and, and one of our specialty areas is not-for-profit organizations. I think we currently uh, work with over 45 not-for-profit wow. organizations. Wow. And uh, Megan's, yeah, and actually, Megan, one thing she did mention, so I'll kind of brag, you, once in a while you can brag about your kids. Sure, so, absolutely. Um, Megan was the keynote speaker uh, at the Indiana, not for, Indiana CPA Society not-for-profit conference. She was one of the keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. Her topic was uh, effective presentations to uh, the board of directors of, of not for profit organizations. And uh, she got, uh, it was the first time she had presented at one of these conferences. And I think you're, you out of, uh, the rating was like 4.4 or 4.5 out of 5. Um, and, then, and then Blake, I'll put a little plug for Blake. Um, he worked at KPMG in Chicago, yes. a lot of big four accounting firms. And then, um, I think you took the exam when you were, before you started at KPMG, you yeah. took the exam. Mm -hmm. He took the CPA exam, passed all four parts the first time, ah. and he got the Elijah Watsell's high grade award. Oh, Just God. to put that in perspective, the year he took the exam, over 92,000 people nationwide took the CPA exam. Only 39 people got the award. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, really, really positive. Yeah, that yeah. was a long time. <laughs> 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 Our brains get a little mushy right. in here. Yeah, no, but Paul, honestly, yeah. that's what, that's why really, if you're interested, please contact sure. Applegate and company. Mm -hmm. There's they're just a gem in our community, and integrity and intelligence and 
um, progressive thinking and progressive work that you do, especially having these young bloods in the in the group. Yeah. Not that we're old, Paul, right? No, 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 no. no. Okay. So, we're at 39, age 39. Yeah, old, yeah, right? yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Um, and maybe a little bit about some of the resources that are out there, the government programs, Megan, you talked a little bit about in yeah. the beginning. So obviously, um, 2020 has been an unusual year for a lot of our clients, uh, for profit and not for profit. So mm -hmm. um, the state of Indiana just um, announced a program uh, called Back on Track. Uh, Indiana Restart Fund. Oh, excuse me, Indiana Restart Fund. Um, but basically, it's if you go if you Google it, um, you know, within. Um, state of Indiana, you can you can find more information, but it's it's going to provide um, some funding for those businesses that have been uh, neg negatively impacted the most. Um, and there's some additional paperwork that has to be provided, uh, but it's a new program that's out there. Um, even if you did receive a PPP loan, um, you know now they're letting those that receive that tie into this money as well. And then um, the SBA also just announced that their loan program is back open, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Um, so it, it is a loan, so it's not forgiven. Sure. But, you know, if you're a um, you know, business or, or might double check a nonprofit that can't get money or funding from a bank, this would be an option um, because in some cases, um, if it's under $25,000, um, it's unsecured, so you, know, you don't need to provide any collateral to get the money. Um, and it's very favorable terms as well. Um, where you don't have to start repaying that loan until a year from um, the date you actually receive the funds. So um, there, there's some programs out there that they're um, you know trying to get some more funding to businesses and those that are being um, you know negatively impacted by the virus. Um, yeah, I was, I was just going to add the Indiana Restart Fund uh, that is geared towards for-profit businesses. So unfortunately, not not for profits would not qualify for that grant. Uh, but basically, if you can demonstrate that you've had a, a, a month over month uh, decline in sales from uh, 2019 to 2020, 40% or more, uh, you would qualify. And the grant is meant to uh, help offset expenses like rent and utilities. And I started uh, helping a client out with an application. It doesn't look very difficult, but it does ask for support for rent and utilities if, if you can demonstrate that you had a decline in sales by 40% or more. Oh, thank you. That's great information, Blake. Megan. Yeah, go ahead. I think some through the payroll tax credits that are available as well. Um, you know, if you have an employee that um, you know gets coronavirus and is not able to work, there's yeah. payroll tax credits that are available yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh. There's, there's uh, uh, emergency paid sick leave credits, and, and these have been around since probably the, the April time frame. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's an emergency family medical leave. So I foresee a lot of um, parents that are going to be in situations where their kids are going back to school, uh, maybe uh, running into issues with this, and actually more so with them being remote learning right now. Uh, so uh, I would say your best resource there would be uh, your, your payroll company to use like a paychecks or an yes. ADP to discuss yes. with them logistically if we have an employee that falls under uh, one of these credits, how do we as a business or nonprofit organization get credit for that? Right, because as we talked a little bit before the program started, we're in a new stage of this pandemic. Number one, it can, as you said, Paul, it can last a long time, a year, two. I mean, we can be changed forever to a certain extent, but in order for businesses, we're just not a few months down. Now we're six months, seven months, and how can you get support as you both are talking? I don't know if you want to talk about that, but some of your businesses have been had real serious problems and some have thrived so yeah i think it's just a matter of, of <clears throat> reopening in a, in a, a smart way yeah. uh, where your customers feel safe uh, and uh, you do things differently i mean as you said Gina, it's not going to be the same and it's right. not going to be the same for maybe two or three years who right. knows right. um, but i think certain businesses that have kind of re-engineered their operation to know that they're going to have to live with this pandemic for some period of time. They're the ones that are surviving and, and certainly taking advantage of the government programs, the PPP loan, the EIDL loan, some of these payroll tax credits, which, by the way, um, if, a, if a company did not claim those credits in their earlier quarters, they can file an amended payroll tax return and get that credit. So even if you didn't claim it at, at first, you can go ahead and uh, have your account file uh, an amended uh, payroll tax return. So um, I think it's just a combination of things. I don't think there's any 
Yeah, I think it's bullet or anything. I think it's going to be a combination of things that are going to help business survive. Right. But, but to reach out and ask, you know, right. for professionals like yourself right, sure. to call Applegate and Company and yeah. ask, you know, can you tell me a little bit about this or where should we go and yeah. what services do you have? You know, we've right. never had to do this before. But, yeah. yeah, to reach out and ask. I think that's yeah. the difference. It's the same thing with our families that we work with. You know, to reach out and ask, to not feel bad that you're a parent and you, you don't know where to go because this is a whole new world. Same thing in business. Yeah, As you, I like that term, re-engineer yeah. what you're doing. Right. And it, there are some creative possibilities right. for all types of businesses that maybe you've not thought of, but to call Applegate and ask, yeah. what do you think? The, the value-added service that, that we can provide to our clients is the, the consulting and the advice and the know-how that we can share with them as far as these different programs and, and ways they can uh, sustain profitability during this pandemic. Uh, the old days of, of just preparing a tax return and handing it to a client saying, see you next year, those, those days are over. Uh, successful CPA firms go way beyond that and, and try to really be a partner with their client and, and uh, give them advice and knowledge that's going to help them uh, reduce their tax burden and also uh, be more profitable. So. And with 400 clients, you certainly have the yeah. knowledge now of yeah. what different types of businesses have done yeah. and what's worked and what hasn't worked. Yeah. Yeah. And it can mean, again, the difference between being a successful organization right. and not. Right. Yeah. Right. Very much so. so. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Great. Um, so. The fun part, of course, all of you have been giving back your whole lives. Uh, we can talk a little bit about something you're a little proud of, which would be the Dragon Boat Races. Uh, uh, and, of course, Dragon Boat Races, for those of you who may not know, it's one of our big fundraisers. We get funding three ways. One, some government funding for our programs. Two, grants. Pam Henderson does a fabulous job of writing our grants. But three is our fundraising. And, of course, Applegate and company have been supportive of many, many years, forever and ever, for Doombra being over 30 years old, attending our galas, and also, in the last six years, our Dragon Boat races. Dragon Boat Stone Lake. And we had to cancel this year, but September 11th, 2021, is uh, hopefully we're all uh, on gear. Paul gave us a great idea. If it's still bad at that point, maybe we'll get to have a testing we'll right prior to the <laughs> take your temperature, right. get tested, right. and we're all good to go because it's a really fun event. So, Megan, maybe you can start sure. out by talking about. Sure. So, so, so this would have been our fourth year um, participating and sponsoring in the, the Dragon Boat Race. So the first year, didn't really know what to expect. Put a team together, not realizing what type of team we needed. Um, we didn't uh, do as well as we did in the, the next couple of years, uh, but we had an idea then what to expect um, in the second year. So we knew to not um, use my parents' back trunk for the tailgating and that we could bring a tent. <laughs> um, so so we, we upgraded our, our food and you know beverage side of it. And then um, the second year, we put together a team. Uh, we got t-shirts, we got a little bit more serious, uh, the Tasmanian Devils, so we, so we came up with a slogan, um, and so we, we carried that tradition into the third year after we won with um, wearing the same t-shirts, um, you know, you can't mess with success, so, uh, you know, it's just been very interesting in getting together, the group that we, we have, you, you don't see super, you know, buff people, um, we've got people that are super motivated, very competitive, <laughs> so we've got some really competitive people. Uh, myself, the Galloways, uh, and, and, yeah, so we've got some competitive people, but also people that just want to have fun and um, support Doombrook. Um, and, you know, we've got the guys from GIS, um, we've got some friends of ours as well. Um, and so it, it's just been a great group, um, and I think we've got a really good group hopefully going into the third year. I know the second year we, it was a very close race, and I know it was the most votes you guys ever yes. had, which was fantastic. Yes, right. And yeah, we, yeah, the most yeah, teams right. we've ever had um, participate. So we know that the competition's increasing. But, like, you know, my dad said before, we can go and practice in front of their house on the lake and we'll get the canoe out and have tryouts if there's any open open spaces. But overall, it's just a great day, um, and especially a great day to, to highlight your work and all you do for the community, um, you know, and for parents and children. Right. Great. Thing. It really is a family day. People could bring their children. We have activities for children while the parents are, there's three runs and they're pretty short, not that long. It's not like you have to paddle it around the lake. Pretty long. And then all the 20 teams are the max. 
Uh, they all bring tents. So it's great camaraderie, great networking, and, of course, for a good cause. We get to teach people what Doomroot does as far as parenting skills and child abuse prevention and intervention. So that is wonderful. And uh, Go ahead. Say yeah, it's, it's just it's an overall great day. That short you know, time that you're paddling, it might not look that long, but yeah. at the end of it, <laughs> we right. all felt like we were about ready to pass out. Right, right. So, so um, you know, it's, I guess we got to start training now for next year. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. I think the biggest surprise for me about that race was if you lined up the teams on a wall and just kind of looked at everybody, we were probably the scrawniest team out there. And so it literally has nothing to do with run. It's all about right. just being coordinated, yeah, being synchronized. And right. it's amazing if everybody's on the same page and paddling at the same time and in the right sequence that you can be people that are just pressing 250 pounds. Right, that's right. Well, right. the first year we entered, uh, UPS was one of the contestants. And, you know, I, I said to our team, I said, you know, let's go, let's go. I said, but, hey, um, UPS people have been hauling box, boxes all day. <laughs> so, you know, they're, uh, they're going to be a little stronger than us probably. Right, right. But, uh, but isn't that the life lesson is yeah. really when, just what you say, Megan, what made me think of it is when um, companies, and it's usually companies, hospitals, organizations that participate in the area, a lot of times they're first year, they're like, what, what do I get, what? But the whole, I think, you know, idea is really the secret is that it's teamwork. Yeah. That you don't yeah. have to be, you know, yeah. muscle man or muscle well, woman. Right. But Megan and Blake and yeah. you are such great leaders that it's working together. Yeah. And that is really, and as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's not all about muscle, but it's all about communicating and mm-hmm. motivating and the I can spirit. Mm-hmm. And boy, in the COVID, in this pandemic, you know, having that I can, what do we need to do to make this work mm-hmm. attitude is what got you your trophy for two years. Yeah. <laughs> you said our entry yeah. went to our conference yeah. room, so right. you know, we, we wear it loud, we're proud. Yeah. There you go. And the best part of, of the Dragon Boat Race is being able to provide funding for the work. Yeah. The, wow. the, the work you do is, is phenomenal, and, you know, in many ways, you're, you're really that safety net that, yeah. that our community needs in, in terms of parenting skills and, and child abuse prevention and that type of thing. And, and it's so important, Thanks. particularly with the stress people are experiencing with this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they they're report there's a lot more issues with these domestic abuse and, and child abuse during this pandemic because everybody's home. And so your services are needed more now than ever. And, and to be able to help support that uh, is, is really important to us. Well, thank you, Paul. And one of the things I saw, having been worked in the school system and a private practice therapist, is that um, I don't think the average person understands the level of dysfunction in some of our communities, mm-hmm. and that with just a little bit of support, right. that family, that individual, that child mm-hmm. can, um, you know, not total smooth sailing, but can function right. in a healthy way right. in our community. Right. So thank you, Paul. That is what we do. And just like your business, I mean, a business needs good accounting mm-hmm. um, practices mm-hmm. and just a little bit of enough. A little bit of knowledge of how to break through some of the challenges can make or break a company. So call Applegate Company uh, would be our advice. And we have to talk a little bit about the video, the YouTube video. Because as Lisa said, this month is keeping the spirit alive of Doombrook uh, and the Dragon Boat Races. Uh, Ms. Megan, yay, Ra, put together YouTube's videos that people sent us. And, Meg, you want to talk a little bit about that? The GIS one? Yeah, the yeah. GIS, Matt yeah. and Coburn. Yep, so Matt Weber um, and Coburn Hutton were um, on our team from General Insurance Services, and they put together uh, a, a Dragon Boat race um, video to kind of just highlight, I guess, some of the, obviously, the benefits of Doombrook um, and what you provide as well, but to just uh, reiterate, you know, two years in a row, Emily and Company has won the very World races, um, and it was just a hilarious video, so check it out on Doombrook's YouTube um, page, but um, so they brought in the trophies, they brought in our t-shirts, they brought in the first year winning medal, the second year winning medal. Uh, and Coburn, from what Matt said, edited the entire thing. So kudos to you, Coburn. You did a great job. Well, right. And if you need a little giggle, just right. Right. there at Doombrook's, uh, right, Megan? Doombrook's YouTube. And then just look for the GIS uh, video on Dragon Ball. 
So is there anything else that any of you want to mention? Or how about Sharon? <laughs> we, we need to talk. My friend Sharon. Can we please say how She's wonderful the, uh, she is? She uh, works part time at the office. Yes. Uh, and, and administration and. Uh, She's the anchor that keeps everything glued together yes, at home. She, uh, she did a great job of raising. We have four children, yes. by the way. You see two of them, but we also have a, a, my daughter Holly is a principal over at Nap School, and my daughter Lindsay is a teacher over at the Springfield School. So we're uh, we're very lucky, very blessed that we have four children that all came back to this community, which is very rare. I mean, you just right. don't see that too right. often. The other thing is they were all born and raised in Michigan City and attended the Michigan City Area School. So it's really kind of nice when people that actually uh, were born and raised in the community come back to the community for their careers and their all successful careers. And as I tell people, they're all off the payroll. Yeah. <laughs> all off the mom and dad payroll. So. You've just done a wonderful job. And I, Sharon is a rock star, and she gives back to the community. You know. Uh, holds so the whole group together. So a little shout out and a little shout out to Holly and Lindsay yeah. and all the work they do in the Michigan mm -hmm. City area schools. Mm -hmm. I it's a tough job, especially these days. So I wanted to remember them and thank you all for being here. Yes, what a delight! You. Just you know, one other thing I might just mention is that when our kids were growing up, um, one of the things I really made it a point is that we would always take a family vacation because. Everybody is going in different directions, but that family vacation, everybody was there. We were together. And also, there were times where, um, you know, I, I could have maybe been at, a, at uh, some place uh, talking to prospective clients or something like that and actually spent time with the kids over at the Long Beach tennis courts, um, practicing with them, hitting them balls, doing drills with them. And, as a result, uh, Blake went to the final four at the state. Uh, Megan went to the semi-state, and Lindsay went to the, I think, the final four at the state also. So, you know, it, it, it paid off, and I think there's just no substitute as a parent for spending the time with the kids. And uh, and when you do and you make that investment, you normally will get a pretty good result. Right. There you go, Paul. You said it all. Make the investment in your family. Yeah. Spending time, taking yeah. little trips, or yeah. trips, any trips, just yeah. the time. And then look what happens 34 yeah. years later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, great. Anything else? Anything? Thank you for having yeah. us. Thank, Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. What, what a delight. What a delight. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a great week. See you next week.